All right, driver, make sure everything is where you want it. Reach up there and pull those belts tight one more time. Going green next time, bye. This is the Scrubbing Tires Podcast. Whoa. What is up? Welcome back, everyone. It was like a month since I've seen you all. No what kidding. Like <laughs> four days, five days? <laughs> Seven. We're not good at math. <laughs> <laughs> Samsonite, I was way off. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, hello all. Hey, we got seven viewers already. So, hey, hey. Uh, all right. Um, this one is episode twenty-three: lug nuts, flips, and Brad K. Oh my! Um, <laughs> I'm your host and creator, Brandon Hall. I'm gonna get it right. Nope, missed it up. Jordan Smith, Jacob Smith, co-host. How's it going, fellas? Doing pretty good. You know, happy two twenty-two twenty-two two Taco Tuesday and National Margarita Day. So. I'm- Wow, I'm doing some margaritas. Today. Is it really? Yeah. I, I get is. all confused with these national days because, like, every day has something, you know, so hey, I can never keep up. I'll take National Margarita Day on a Taco Tuesday any day. Did you it have just, tacos for dinner? I did, they were delicious. Wow, mm-hmm. wow. interesting. He is on there it. Heck yeah, I, know. I, <laughs> plan, I plan out my meals sometimes. I, I barely <laughs> even know what day it is, let alone what. It's- yeah. <laughs> It's the, power of face, it's the power of Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, as we promised, uh, we're back again today. Sorry for all the listeners and everyone that thought we were going to be on yesterday. That was a plan, but then uh, I got back from Daytona, and uh, I was in no shape to do a podcast. <laughs> so you were hung over. No, not necessarily. Uh, <laughs> just ease. sunburnt and tired, and yeah, it's just we'll get into all that. But anyway, <laughs> um, so here we are on a Tuesday. Um, so hopefully everyone can join and listen to us either tonight or later on in the week when we extract the audio. But yeah, a ton of stuff to get into, including all the Daytona stuff. Um, yeah, so we'll get into it. Uh, Jordan, do you have a listener fan shout out? Uh, I want to give a shout out to our uh, homeboy Braxton DeWeese. Hey, for uh, yeah, doing well in his little races he had on the uh, in the STP machine. Yeah, he is yeah. actually racing right now. Oh, uh, we're gonna have to link that. Yeah, uh, excuse me, I'm looking up. Uh, it's the uh, ITZR season opener Apache F- Warrior Foundation 125. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it must be anybody's uh, NASCAR with a mouthful of uh, <laughs> yeah. races. He's in a super sponsors. late model, yeah. So, uh, yeah, if anybody's looking to watch some iRacing racing tonight, yeah. give his page a follow. I was watching it for a couple laps, but yeah, he he races like I swear five times a day, um, every day. But uh, anyway, yeah, um, shout out to him and his dad. Um, yeah, his dad kind of chimes in and lets us know when he's racing and how he did and stuff because. It's a lot to keep track of, especially with everything we got going on. So, yeah, shout out to right. Deweese's. And I, I wanted to give one too. Also, I just pulled up uh, Jacob, uh, not you, Jake, but uh, oh, Jacob. Goodness. I think it's Poland or Pollen. Um, if you're watching, uh, just wanted to shout out to you. He's a, when we were actually standing in line to uh, meet Chase Elliott, um, I mentioned that we had a podcast and, you know, people are always like, yeah, I'll check it out. But he actually did. And he actually found himself in one of my pictures. And he messaged me and said, hey, I'm the one that uh, you told about your podcast. And, uh, yeah, it looks great and told us all good luck in our racing season. So shout right out on. to Jacob. Hey, yeah. Heck, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, we're uh, we're worldwide now in Florida. <laughs> Sweet. <clears throat> so, Add it to the list. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, <laughs> there you go. But uh, before we get into the uh, weekend recap, we're going to share some or <clears throat> excuse me, uh, show some love to one of our presenting partners team denver homes what's going on scrub and tires listeners this is michael and goodart with team denver homes remax professionals we know the real estate market has been crazy the past couple years and this year is no different that is why you need an agent who knows how to navigate this market and properly represent clients with their best interests in mind whether you are buying or selling a home or just curious about the local market i would love to offer my support and services 
We are a top producing team in the greater Denver area that specialize in luxury, first time home buyers, and investment properties. We will get you matched up with the right agent for your needs. After all, real estate is the best investment you can buy. Feel free to reach out to me at any time via phone call, text, or email. I look forward to connecting with you soon. There you have it. Beautiful. She is actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on a uh, client business call right now trying to uh, buy a house. So there you go. There Sweet. You go. Works yeah. till late in the night. There you I'm go. I'm telling Nothing you, she'll answer, she'll answer whenever, even at 2 a.m. By all means, wake us up if you need to buy or sell your house. <laughs> Anyway, um, let's I might see. do that just for fun. <laughs> hey, it better be serious if you're. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said a cuss word five minutes. Five. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So weekend recap: uh, we had Speed Week, uh, no longer weeks, but week. Um, uh, whirlwind of stuff. I'm just going to talk about the. We won't get into qualifying practice, the dual races, all that good stuff to save some time here, but. I will lead us off uh, with the truck series. Obviously, they raced on Friday night. Um, I'll just go out and say it. That was being there the whole week. That was probably my favorite uh, race of all three of them. Um, just, I don't know why. Just way cool to see them. Um, so anyway, you had, um, or excuse me, truck race. What am I? I don't know if I said Xfinity. My bad. Truck race was my favorite of them all on Friday. Um, just because those guys and girls, there was only one girl, one girl. Haley Deegan, uh, race really hard and just put it all out there because they're they're proving something still and they haven't made it to the highest level. But anyway, you had the next era 250 at Daytona. Uh, things weren't actually quiet uh, at all. They were, I think they were side by side for the first, I don't even know, can't even recall that, but that was a lot of laps ago. But they were <laughs> side by side and they didn't just line up, you know, a single file like we talked about last week. Um, that we were hoping the Cup Series didn't do. They were side by side, three wide sometimes. Um, but anyway, uh, qualifying, it, it kind of seemed like John Hunter Nemechek was just kind of run away with the show. He qualified on the pole, had a bunch of Toyotas up there. I think they went, yeah, they went P1 through four in qualifying, and then had Zane Smith, which obviously we'll talk about here in a minute. But uh, stage one, John Hunter Nemechek won. Stage two, John Hunter Nemechek won again. And then um, what a finish. Uh, the wreck, uh, I'm not sure if you all saw that wreck or yep. not, but that happened right in front of Ethan and I, and I have a video, a sweet video of it. It's pretty cool. You just see, um, what's his name, uh, Tyler Ankrum just turn sideways right there and just smoke and metal flying everywhere. It was crazy. But anyways, uh, after the dust settled, um, yeah, I agree with you, Brian Sanders, very long week. Uh, after the dust settled, Zane Smith picked up the win um, in his number 38 Ford uh, Loves Truck Stop Machine. Uh, like Zane Smith, and I'll tell you a little story before I pass it on. Uh, Ethan and I uh, made a lot of bets um, uh, throughout this, and they consisted of chugging beers if you lost. And I was on the losing end all three times. <laughs> and uh, the one for this one, well, actually, the first bet was that um, Natalie Decker in the Xfinity series would um, either cause a wreck or be a caution. And obviously she didn't make the show, so I got I escaped by there. But uh, then the next one, we just picked our picks for uh, the truck series, and I picked uh, Ben Rhodes and Stuart Friesen. Uh, ben Rhodes almost got it, taking second. Stuart Friesen Close. got wrecked. Yeah, yeah. St Stuart Friesen got wrecked there at the end. But anyway, uh, one of Ethan's picks uh, was Zane Smith. So lo and behold, uh, while Zane Smith was doing his burnout, which I was taking a video of, I was slamming a beer. So. <laughs> there was that um but yeah like i said it was a i thought it was the most one of the most entertaining races the xfinity which uh jake will talk about here in a second was uh pretty exciting too but yeah that's the uh truck series recap zane smith busy renner so jake what do you got for us for the xfinity series yeah we had the beef it's what's for dinner 300 at daytona <laughs> <laughs> i should announce these races i'm just yeah. kidding uh it's like america you know you just when you see that beef it's what's for dinner you just got to say it like that you can't oh yeah say it any other way <laughs> um yeah we uh we're watching this race uh saturday in the garage beautiful day not only in florida but here in denver at least for a couple hours and uh yeah what a race start of the race was pretty good and you know guys were side by side for a while kind of stretched out to single file racing and then 
I kind of knew actually George dad and I were talking about it that, uh, you know, 30 laps to go, these guys are going to start making some moves and we're going to start seeing some real wrecks. And I mean, I hate to say it, it didn't disappoint. You know, I think with what, like 10 laps ago, we had at least what, three cautions there. Yeah, it was wild. And of course, as everybody hopefully saw the, uh, flip and into the fence by, uh, Myatt Snyder. I mean, wow. I even saw it when that was coming and he turned around and was going backwards. It's like, Oh, here he goes into the fence. And yep, yeah. sure enough, it, them cars just going at them speeds with the wind and all the air going underneath that car. It's, it's easy to flip those things, but I am glad that he walked out of that car. He had a little bit of a limp, but I mean, who wouldn't when he just <laughs> slams into the fence doing yeah. what? 180, 190 yeah. miles an hour. I'd be keeled over and wind yeah. knocked out of me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, going from what? 180, 190 miles an hour to almost zero, zero in yeah. that quick, you know, it's something's going to hurt when you get out of that car. So, but I mean, what a, I ripped the rear end straight out of it. Uh, the motor flew out of it, hit another car. Like, I mean, that was just crazy. They were finding parts in motor homes. Yeah. In, uh, the, in, in the backstretch. Yeah. Michael Jordan was actually <laughs> yeah. right where it hit the fence, was right in front of Michael Jordan's uh, right. little set, you know, <clears throat> spot there by his motor home. And a piece of the tra or, uh, spring was stuck into the front end of his motor home. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. But, I mean, that just goes to show you, you know, as much as NASCAR has been changing these cars and safety and stuff, and especially at these tracks, making sure that these cars stay inside the track and, and nobody gets hurt like that, you know, it just goes to show you all the technology and all the hard work that they put into this. So glad to see my Snyder uh, walked away from that and wasn't worse than what it could have been. But I mean, he was up there and just kind of sucks for him and that team. You bring a car completely good. And then you leave with no motor, no rear end, you know, chassis all messed yeah. up. But... You leave with a cockpit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you that's going to go to the uh, Dale Jr. graveyard. So that'd be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be a good piece. But, I'll just uh, add um, we actually, you could see, because obviously that was on the back stretch where it happened. And we, you, we actually saw the car go up like this. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and then j they just came around. And I mean, if you weren't sparking, I think. Uh, who you're about to announce was the winner and I won't spoil it, but uh, I think he was the only one that wasn't sparking when they came by. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, with what two laps to go there, I think AJ Allmendinger uh, was in second, made a pretty good move to get up to first. And I don't know if it's better to be in first or second or any car behind you, but uh, AJ Allmendinger, it seems like he's always right up there in second, third, first in these Daytona 500 races. And, you know, he finishes them but he's just never got over that hump of winning it. So I was really pulling for him, but you know, it is what it is, but yeah, Austin Hill won the race, AJ second, Noah Gregson, which is great. Got third, Riley Herbs and Justin Allgaier. So four out of the top five were Chevys, which is awesome. I love yes. to see that, but what a great race. Uh, you know, couldn't ask for anything better. Hope, you know, obviously we wouldn't want to see that flip, but you know, it still was a pretty good entertaining race for those Xfinity guys. So I thought it was a good race and, you know, more to come on the rest of the season. So I'm going to pass this over to George to do the cup recap. Yeah, that was, uh, I mean, the whole weekend was pretty, uh, pretty intense. It was good to see that the uh, event for the 500 was at least sold out. Yeah. Uh, good to see people back <laughs> in this. I can't imagine just people on top of people or what? Yeah, it was almost too much. Like it was, <laughs> I've never seen so many people in my life ever. I mean, what is it? 250,000 people or something like that. Well, they, I don't know. The, the number kept changing. I know it, no matter what the number was, it was over 100,000 just in the stands, not yeah. you know, down below. Uh, Brad Kozlowski, right before the race, said 130 up in the stands, and I, it was every bit of it. I mean, it was. <laughs> it yeah, was that's awesome. And then, I mean, that's awesome. When the race ended, man, it was like a, it looked like, like a zombie apocalypse. There were so many people <laughs> running everywhere. <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we got we uh, we were on day two of working in the garage on the race cars, so we we were all kind of just uh, watching it as we were doing stuff, and um, I thought it was a pretty good race overall. Uh, you know, with the new car and everything, it was interesting to see how guys were gonna what they were gonna do. You know, more or less, um, a lot of beating and banging, a lot of pushing. I know a whole lot of people don't like Brad Keselowski at this moment, um, but. <laughs> We'll get kind of into that a little bit later. 
<laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> this, 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 dang it, I suck, this guy. We'll, we'll just hide that. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so, I mean, yeah, Martin Truex took both stages, which I thought he, you know, early on, the you could tell it, like, Brad Keselowski was really strong. I mean, he was just pushing guys all around the track. Um, then the Toyotas kind of came on. The Chevys didn't really do much, like, early on in the race. You know, the Hendrick boys, they kind of fell back and then were kind of non-existent for a long time. Yeah, and like a not long time. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was kind of – we were sitting there talking in the garage, and, yeah, I was <laughs> kind of pulling for – you know, I was pulling for true X. Like I was hoping he was going to get it. It's like, okay, he won both stages. Let's see if he can finish this finally. And, um, I mean, got down to, you know, beating and banging. What was that? 30 some, 30 some laps to go cause another caution. Then he got 10 laps to go. Brad Kislowski or, uh, was it Brad that caused that one? No, it wasn't that one, uh, with 10 laps to go. No, that was Tyler um, Reddick and Tyler Kevin Reddick. Harvick. Oh yeah. That one Harvick where he, where Busher checked up. Yeah, and then, and then they Harvick just got ran. in the back. Yeah, and right. then no and Gregson then just... took security. Right. Yeah, nose dive right into the wall. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, you had Brad Keselowski pushing with like three to go, and then they had a green white checkered, and that was intense. That that finish was really good. I really yeah. didn't think Cindric was going to be able to pull that off, but I mean, great job by him. Really, I mean, he trusted his teammate. He didn't try blocking and pulling a Joey Logano and wrecking the entire field on the last lap. <laughs> right. So that was good. Yeah. I thought um, Blaney was going to get it. I yeah. thought he was too. I mean, he had that momentum and it's, it was kind of crazy to see how much like a lot didn't happen. And you didn't really realize if guys were trying to do too much during the middle of the race. And then once it got down to the very end, you could see like how quickly in the draft, these cars can maneuver and they oh, just yeah. suck up and whatnot. So it was, that was kind of cool. Um, overall, I thought the car was pretty good. I liked the package. I didn't think NASCAR did a t- too bad of a job on the package. Uh, the wheels, they need to address the wheel situation. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe Brad Kozlowski was right. I, I mean, yeah. Apparently he was, yeah. you know, that whole team. I mean, they saw something wrong and yeah, but anyways, but yeah, Austin centric came home with the win and I know that we had our, uh, top five picks and we all suck. So we're all going to yeah. have to like slam some beers here. <laughs> I'm uh, not drinking anything. We'll, for a while we'll get now. we'll get to that when that dive comes. Yeah, right. Yeah. But I should I should have uh, just used my wheel from yeah. last year. Just I told you last well, week. Bubba Wallace wheel. almost won it. I know. Yeah, Bubba, yeah he finished without second. a fender. Without a fender, yeah. <laughs> well, and I I was I saw Kyle Busch there at the end, and he had no right front. And I was yeah. I, I was sitting there telling Jake, I was like, he's got a chance. He's got. A, I'm. You guys are gonna drink beer on the broadcast, but didn't end up that way. But. <laughs> But yeah, it was a pretty good Daytona 500. Uh, really, really happy to see that rookie uh, get up there. I know that he's done really well in the Xfinity Series the last couple of years. So, um, right now, I mean, Fords look good. I mean, it's early, very early, very, very, very early in the season. So we'll see what happens when we go to some of these other tracks and see, you know, especially at California coming up, uh, be real interesting, real interesting. Right. So, but anyways, yeah, there's your recap for the Daytona 500. It sucks it's already over. I look forward to that race every year, and then it comes by and goes so fast, and you're like, dang it. I'm kind of glad it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling Jake before we went on air, I, me and Ethan uh, watched everything you could with between ARCA, the duels, the trucks, yeah. Xfinity, and Cup. We watched everything, practice, qualifying, all of it, except for Xfinity qualifying when we were uh, meeting Josh Berry. So, I mean, you kind of have to take that all in when you're there. Uh, yeah. I mean, we got to the track. 9 10 a.m. every day and didn't leave till 9 10 p.m. So, very, <laughs> not a boy. Long <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyway, all right, cool. <clears throat> all right, well, we'll go ahead and get into our next segment, which is brought to you by our partner, not sponsored, partner, hey. Citywide Banks. Uh, question for all of you out there when you go into your us bank, for them, for them oh. not us. For the, for the fans, for the fans. Okay. You ever go into your bank and you know you just don't even know who's in there. You go in there and they kind of just don't make you feel like they want you in there, and they just you kind of leave like you know I didn't really have a good experience. Well, Citywide Banks, we when you walk in, if you're upset, you're walking out with a smile because that's our attitude. Is that 
we're going to put a smile on everybody's face. And when they leave, they're going to feel better than when they did when they come in. So we like personalized service. We like to know your name. We don't like to just say, hey, swipe your debit card so we can pull up your account. We're going to know who you are. We're going to pull up your account before you even walk in that door. And we're going to give you the best service we can. So if you're looking for a service like that, call this guy. I'll hook you up. Wow. <laughs> I wow. know. That was impressive. Good. That was a good one. I know. Well, you got me so. Hey, all right. Well, you bet. <laughs> yeah, we all we all bank with citywide banks. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> and you live down the sh like literally two minutes from our Hamden location. I know, I do. I drive by it a lot. <laughs> you do. Uh, cool. But we're gonna go ahead and get into our green flag, black flag segment. So for all of you that have never seen this, uh, this is a segment where we pick a topic, talk about it. And if you like it, it's green flag. If you don't like it, black flag. So it's kind of your own opinions on what either one of us have to say. So I'll go ahead and start us off. And going on with our my theme of kind of doing some local track uh, stuff. Mine today, green flag, black flag. I hope I haven't said this yet. But do you think <laughs> not only CNS, but Intermountain, uh, I-25. I, I'm not sure exactly what I-25's tire rules are. But as we all know, us racers out there, uh tires are probably going to be an issue this year so cns is strictly hoosier so do you think it's about time that we kind of explore other options other than hoosier so green flag Ooh. black flag george go. go uh i i think in a, in a day and age like this that you should be able to find whatever you can find do you know what i mean like here if you want to stay open as a track um, I mean, I know you probably have a, a deal with Hoosier and whatnot, but at the same time, like I, like last year, how many different tracks that we had heard about that weren't even racing last year because they couldn't get tires from Hoosier. You know, you know that's, 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 that's sad that, because that that's closes close tracks. Track. You know, you know most, most of these people, they can't go a whole year without having race car drivers on the track and fans in the stands and drinking beer and everything else, you know? So I think it's, it's, if, if it looks like it's going to be a shortage, then why not open the doors and be like, whoever can get his tires. And at that weekend, it's a, you know, good year or, you know, whoever then, okay, this week we're running these. Cause these are the tires that we got. Um, but if not, if Hoosier says they're good, then obviously, I mean, you have a good deal with them, but I, I, I say green flag, I say be open to the idea at least of having multiple manufacturers. Any, Hey, and, th and this is something like my dad's always talked about too. And like with NASCAR, you know, they only have good years why not give why not have multiple different tire manufacturers bring a tire and you get to choose which ones you want if you want to go with goodyear or you want to go to hoosier or you want to go with whoever mm -hmm. you know same thing at a local level if i want to go if well i really like the hoosiers you know like when we were kart racing sorry when we were kart racing you had maxis you had dunlap right. or not dunlap you had um burris and then you had we rebrand the vegas so you know like didn't matter you know, you pick whatever tire you want. And then if the guy's running well, then shoot, they're running good on good years. I'm, I'm going to pick me up a pair of good years. You know what I mean? So why not create some competition? Why does it always have to strictly be one tire manufacturer and that's it? You know, I understand why, but at the same time, like, why not? It'd be, it'd be interesting to see for sure. But I say green flag. That's yeah. I, yeah. I, um, like Kyle control just said, the, I know for the legends, they, because of that rule, they said that you can run, uh, you know, federals, if you got them. Um, and thankfully I have a couple sets, but, uh, yeah, I'm all in green flag, um, uh, run whatever the hell you can at this point, uh, yeah. just with, uh, the world, how it is and supply chains and shortages across, not just tires, but everything really. I mean, we all want to race. So whatever the hell you have, as long as it's not cheating and, you know, not prepped or, you know, if you're going to cut tires or site, you know, whatever you're going to do to them, make that a rule but yeah whatever you got that's still legal and mm. safe obviously you don't want to bring a tire that's on its cords or yeah. whatever um yeah I, I agree with that whatever whatever we got to do to get the race cars out there mm -hmm. yeah pull up uh kyle clegg's there hey kyle nice to see you <laughs> yeah, where you been <laughs> yeah i uh yeah exactly i like what he says there yeah i mean shoot some tires they might work at one track and especially track conditions and then another track they're not as good so you know why not be able to use different brands and try different things because you know if you're going to make these cars exactly the same across the board there's got to be something that stands out to somebody else that is going to make you more competitive so right 
And yeah. I'll, I'll read it out because I got uh, Ethan actually uh, told us we need to read out stuff because when you're just <laughs> listening to it. Kyle Clegg's comment was, World Outlaws, you can run two different brands, or at least you could years ago. I remember a certain track were killer with one versus the other. So, yeah. 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 Great comment. I agree. All right, cool. Well, I'll uh, I'll shoot my question to you guys. So this is going to be along the NASCAR theme. <coughs> uh, should NASCAR institute a driver requirement for competing in the lesser series, like for a minimum years before you can move up in the series? So like you get you get brought into a truck series because I know that guys are buying rides now. Like there was a big thing with that Drew Dollar kid um, oh. <laughs> in the ARCA race and then the Xfinity race, um, you know causing a wreck because you know you hear from kyle bush all the all the time too guys out here that can't even win late model races they're out here driving cup cars look like a bunch of hooligans so should they institute a rule for that making the competition even a little bit better in my mind so you got to stay in the truck series for two years before you can move up to the xfinity and then you got to stay in the xfinity series two years before you can move up to the cup series what do you think about that idea brandon go uh, yeah, and I w was actually talking about this sp specific topic. I uh, almost got tongue-tied there uh, <laughs> with Ethan at the track because I've heard rumors, I don't know how true it is, that uh, Haley Deegan is going to the Xfinity Series next year. And to me, uh, I mean, I love Haley Deegan. I think she's incredible what she's doing, but do I think it's way too early for that? Absolutely. I think <laughs> – Maybe, what she got maybe one or two top tens in the truck series um, and ethan even uh, you know him and i were still talking about that and we said you know maybe if you make it to the final four in any given series then you can move up because mm -hmm. you've clearly proven that you can you know do all these things and whatnot but yeah I, green flag on that uh what's his name drew dollar that was crazy and uh who was it in the uh was it the truck series or Xfinity series that he wrecked? Uh, can't remember who it was, but they were not very happy with him. Um, but yeah, and that, I mean, same thing in the ARCA series. So yeah, I think, I don't know what that would look like because you could have like, and I'm not singling out the women of the sport here, but you could have Jennifer Joe Cobb, right? Like always been in the truck series, mm -hmm. you know, does mediocre at best, not saying the talent's not there, but she's in subpar equipment. And that one time she wanted to qualify, was it a cup ride at Talladega? And they told her yeah. no because of that exact reason. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you're going to institute it for her, you got to do it with everyone. Right. Um, you know, just it is a safety thing because you don't, they haven't been in, especially plate races for God's sake. Like, you don't want someone out there that doesn't know what they're doing, bump drafting or blocking someone. So, right. yeah, I can go on and on. About it. Yeah. But green flag, I think, I don't know what that looks like because you, you don't want a minimum per se because Jennifer Joe Cobb's been in the truck series for 10 years. And I don't, I, you know, but whatever the formula is, it, you got to have a certain amount of top tens or, you know, whatever, but yeah. Right. I just something, great. just right. something along the lines that shows you got to prove yourself in one series before you can move up more or less. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. Green flag on that one. Yeah. I, uh, I agree. Green flag. Uh, it's funny. Dad and I were talking about this when I was driving home from work and, you know, what what sucks is you know money talks you know a lot of a lot of the times these kids they their parents are just loaded and hey we're uh we're gonna throw you in an xfinity car because we got the money and you know they're they you pay to pay to race right but i i honestly think you could still <laughs> money still talks but you know what yeah institute a rule that you know you got to be in the arca for a year you know and then you know kind of like danica patrick she didn't just jump straight from Indy car straight into the cup car. She right. She did it right. Arca. She didn't go in a truck. I do believe she went <coughs> straight into Xfinity was there for a year and then went into the cup series and you know, she didn't do the greatest, but she still did pretty well. Uh, you know, who knows what would have happened if she went straight from Indy straight into the cup, you know, it would have been a lot worse, but you know, uh, <laughs> you got to think of it this way too. Look at uh, kind of like Kyle, uh, Kyle Clegg said, kind of like NCAA to pro sports, you know, the NBA, the NFL, they both have rules that you have to at least go to one year in college, play in college sports. And then if you're good enough, you can be drafted. And, you know, sometimes guys are talented enough that their sophomore year, they feel they could go, you know, pro they go pro, but at least you had that one year experience 
in the NCAA to where you're not just going straight from an 18 year old kid yeah. in high school going LeBron and playing James. against, yeah, playing, <laughs> right. you know, uh, I could go on and on about the NC, or, uh, NBA, yeah. but <laughs> we're a racing least, podcast. Yeah, yeah. At least for like football, like, 18 year old that i i couldn't imagine going straight from senior year straight oh, into pro sports get like murdered no. playing yeah. against like guys like aaron donald like Shoot, there's no way murdered <laughs> yeah so it's kind of the same thing to me is that you know you don't want to go straight from legend car racing into a cup car just because mommy and daddy got the almighty dollar i yeah. i i'm all for uh nascar at least great instituting topic. some sort of arca one year truck one year and so on and so forth. So that's and the only reason why I came up with that was because you kind of took the other one that I was thinking about doing that right now. So <laughs> oh. I'll let you go ahead and uh speak this one. <laughs> I was just gonna say on the on that last on your topic, there's it's it's going on with uh Todd Gillen. He had yeah. one ser- season in the trucks and now he's making his debut in the damn cup series. And mm-hmm. like uh Mike Gegenbacher here uh saying, What about Ty Gibbs? Yeah. I think I think Ty needs another year, obviously still in the Xfinity series, but I think he needs this year and maybe another one. Yeah, he started five races, won four of them last year. That's great. Mm-hmm. I think he's super talented, but just because he's a Gibbs doesn't again make right. him king of the throne and get out there and you know. The kid's got well. some talent. I'll, yeah. I will say that. I mean, he's he's done really well in the Arca series, but yeah, and then step up to the trucks. <laughs> well, there Run you go. Kyle, the trucks. Kyle Clegg wants a cup <laughs> ride. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Let's there you go. let's get it on Facebook. Hashtag well, Clegg Clegg to the cup. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come crew for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, right. That's awesome. Um, so my green flag, and yes, we man, we are on uh, green flag, black flag segment. Um. Mine is should green flag, black flag, Brad Kozlowski should be penalized for aggressive driving at Daytona. So what I mean by that is blatantly he wrecked two people by aggressively bump drafting, so on and so forth. So either points held from Daytona's finish, what he ended up top 10, I think somewhere, or should he, yeah. So should he get points docked for that or should he not be able to qualify uh, Sunday at auto club? And we'll start with Jordan. Uh, so no, I, I'm going to say black flag, but I think there could be an alternative to help with those kind of situations. So I say black flag, cause I don't think you should be docked points or anything like that, because this is NASCAR's fault. They allowed this. They talk about it every year in the driver's meetings and everything else, Quit aggressive driving, quit bump drafting. You guys are wrecking so many cars, blah, blah, blah. So the reason why I say sort of green flag is that they need to do something in the race. So you get caught, you get caught doing that. You either get an EOL or you have to do a pass through penalty and go lap down. Interesting. Like that's ultimately to me, because that hurts them in the race. It doesn't do anything about points, couple points, big deal, but it, it, it'll make you think, okay, if I do this, I'm out of the race. Like I got no shot at winning. You know what I mean? Penaling them after penalizing them after the race is over or even the next week, like I, th- I don't, I don't think that's right. I think you got to penalize them in the heat of the moment. It's like you get, we told you, like, get on the radio. They got, they, they can do it. Number six, knock it off. There's your warning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And and then if they do it again and they wreck the field or they wreck people on, intentionally like that because they don't want to follow the rules, then boom, your butt goes to the back. And then if you do it again, yeah, you go lap down or whatever case may be. I just think it needs to be taken care of in that specific race in the heat of the moment, like penalize them right then and there. And that'll cause some drama. Like, Oh, he's leading the race. And all of a sudden, boom, gets sent to the back and he's lapped down and whatever. So, right. yeah. That's great point. And I, I agree with you. So green flag, but just change it up the way. They just change it up. It. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I, what do you think, Jake? I agree with George. You know, there's so many things nowadays, especially this year with this new car that they're going to get penalized after the fact, after the race, that stuff like this that happens in race, like wrecking somebody or spinning somebody out. Yeah, I, I think it needs to be handled in the race, especially what there was like, what, five, six laps to go when Keselowski did that to uh, mm-hmm. Crash House. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, just like any local series, you spin somebody out or you're involved in the incident, your ass goes, excuse me, your butt goes to the back. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and especially for guys like Brad K, you know, you're a veteran driver, you know, mm-hmm. I know you're trying to push, you're trying to get as most you can and, and it's getting down to those laps, but got to be smarter than that. You already wrecked two, you know, how many cars 
twice before in the middle of the race. Early and, in the race too. Yeah, that yeah, one was, was like, what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. and, and like, you, you know, like just the way he was drafting, you could just tell it was like, he's going to spin somebody out, especially, you know, how high he was going up on their right side. It's like he, these cars were loose coming off the corners. Anyway, you could see them. People were, yeah, I was going to say Harrison was all over the place. Yeah, they're sideways on their own without anybody pushing them, let alone get somebody on the right rear. They're getting loose. Psh, they're going around. So, like, just got to be smarter than that. So, yeah, I think especially next week uh, or maybe even the next super speedway is, hey, you can bump, but you cannot lock on. If you lock on, then psh, you're you're getting penalized, stop and go, something like that. But especially if you spin somebody out, you're going to the back. So right. black flag on the after green flag on the during so that's my yeah, no that's i agree and we got a lot of comments kind of people talking about moving people for a win Opinion. I'm, well and i've that's wrecked my where, mom for a win well no, i mean to that point like i don't if if you lock bumpers with somebody that's fine but if you intentionally take somebody out like yeah go to the rear like you you right. know especially twice yeah like i get yeah. it i get it you're pushing you're trying to and, and especially like teammates and stuff you know they'll push each other to the end and whatnot which is totally fine i don't want to take that aspect out of it but you, like you're saying jake you got to be smart about it like these cars are super touchy and especially at those speeds and i mean you're just begging for every year we have the big one because of somebody doing that exact thing and mm -hmm. you know if guys could just have it in the back of their mind like, okay i gotta be a little bit smarter than this or i'm getting taken out of the race even if i'm not involved in it you know, I'm going to the rear. Then mm -hmm. guys might actually hit, think twice about what they're doing. And so, it was so man. early. Like last yeah, year, lap 15, pointless. they had a red flag. And like, what are we doing? Well, yeah. and I think. It's not the Daytona another, 15. It's a Daytona. Well, yeah. another another topic to that, too. I think a lot of that crap went on <laughs> is because they had these stupid uh, stage races. You know, so yeah. early on, they're trying to fight for stage points. Get rid yeah. of the damn stage races. Like, I, I don't care who wins at lap 45. Right for the stage, doesn't exactly. matter. Yeah, get and rid of the stage there, races. Sitting there live, like you guys have commercials and stuff to watch. Not that they're really any good, <laughs> but at the racetrack, it's they're going whatever they are on the pace lap, fifty-five mile an hour. You can chug two beers by the time they go green. Again. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's, that's true. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, that's a whole other topic. The segment for stage racing. We, yeah, yeah, we'll leave well, that we, one up for today. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about it a lot, but uh, <sighs> I don't know. Yeah, we'll get into all that. I think NASCAR needs to make a lot of changes here here quickly, in our opinion. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, let's get into our next segment. We got a couple things different here. Obviously, give me some love in segment is next, but we're gonna talk to you or let our one of our partners, town and country of Alamosa, uh, talk to you about maybe buying or selling a, a used car. So here we go. I think it's time you trade in that old truck. SUV, car, or all three if you got them for something new. What do you say? I mean, come on, people. It's 2022. Before you do, though, go check out our friends and presenting sponsor, Town & Country Alamosa. Their experienced staff and years of expertise satisfying customer after customer will change the way you purchase new or used vehicles. Don't believe me? Give them a call at 719-587-1800 or visit www townandcountryalamosa.com and experience their unmatched customer service firsthand. Don't forget to tell them the Scrub and Tires podcast sent you. So you want to know a fun fact about that little ad there? I saw two of those things in that uh, ad this weekend. Nice. Can you guess, can you guess, can you guess what they are? I'm going to guess one was the Bronco. No, actually. Oh, wow. Wow. The, honestly, was it, was it the junker car anything. at the beginning? <laughs> well, maybe, <laughs> maybe three things. No, the uh, ZR2, that uh, Chevy Silverado ZR2, oh, yeah. and of course, Ooh. Chase Elliott. So met him and did all that. Yeah, anyway, so. Anyway. Did you cry? Uh, no, actually, by then I was really sunburnt and pissed <laughs> off because uh, we were standing in line uh, in the front row at the Chevy display. And that's how we got all those pictures with all them, got all their autographs and stuff. And uh once Chase came up and did his spiel, I mean, there were probably 500 people standing there and yeah. just elbows coming in. Sign this, sign this, sign this. So, <laughs> we're not uh, I, worthy. I was going to yeah. say, I, I, I picture you and Ethan like uh, Garth and uh, Wayne and Wayne. <laughs> no, World. we're not worthy. No, so <laughs> we're not worthy. I, it was funny because we bought Chevrolet hats and that's uh, that one thing. 
wherever it is right there that has all the autographs and stuff on it but uh Ethan got his hat signed and Ch and Ethan was like, Hey, Chase, can you sign this one too? And he's like, yeah. And I was holding the phone with the camera on selfie mode or whatever it's called. And I was like, Chase, can you, you know, take a photo with us? Like we did everybody else, but then here come 15 other things. And like, I'm sure he was like overwhelmed because yeah. it was like 50,000 things. And then I didn't get my hat signed, but it's okay. Cause I got his autograph right there. And then no picture with him, but he was like one of the only ones, um, no, we didn't, but I mean, Bummer. he's a cool dude. He's a cool dude. Hey, you had you had Blaney take your phone and take the selfie for you. So that's, I did. That's a plus right there. Yeah, and uh, we had we had Austin Dillon do that. Um, Justin Haley, Daniel Hemrick. I have a video for everyone. Um, uh, we uh, actually got uh, Daniel Hemrick um, to talk about Colorado National Speedway, and I don't know where the video is. Nice. I think uh, uh, Ethan saw it, but anyway um <clears throat> i asked a question i know i'm going on a tangent here but um the uh producer johnny uh that was doing the chevrolet thing he would ask uh fans if they had any questions and he kept coming to me because we talked like we were there for four straight days hanging out with him so anyway i asked daniel hemrick i said hey you know i'm uh gonna be racing legend cars in in colorado and you know racing with guys like chris eggleston who and jace hansen who you've raced against and he went off about legend cars and um and he mentioned chris eggleston's name and he's like he's a great guy and you guys got a great track there in colorado national speedway and said it all so i'll have to get that video and share Sweet. it with everybody Heck but yeah yeah, yeah the uh, drivers were kind of starstruck when you tell them hey can you take a selfie and they're like you want me to take it i'm like yeah and they're like, okay and they're like i can like they never took a picture before but, yeah. <laughs> how, well, yeah, how it was pretty cool yeah <laughs> Well, in cool. the new day and age of the pandemic, they're probably like, wait, you want me to touch your phone? You're cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was, was kind of worried about that. But in the moment, they, I mean, they did it. Don't worry. So, I got some antiseptic wipes. Here. You yeah, were good. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, here. When you saw that uh, that guy get Chase's autograph on his arm and get it tattooed, and Jordan texted me and said, do that. And I was like, uh. I don't know. If, I don't know if Michael Ann will like right, that. Right here no, on your chest. It, yeah, I told her that, too. And she's like, I don't think that would be great. That's so, awesome. Anyway um so huge announcement uh today um kyle morris and mark bremkamp uh, excuse me i'm losing my voice here um will be hosting slash creating a couple league races six of them i think in total correct me if i'm wrong um on once a month on a friday uh in the i rocky mountain legends racing association that is the cleanest i've ever said that Good job. um yeah and so the scrub and tires podcast is has agreed to broadcast those races uh, much like we did with the holiday 100 if you remember back uh, right before christmas so we will not be well jordan might participate here and there but mm -hmm. um i and jacob will not participate um i wouldn't be worth a damn anyway uh, against some of these guys but um yeah so we're going to broadcast that the first one is at five flag speedway this friday uh february almost said some other month but february 25th it's the i rocky mountain legends racing association snowball derby presented by peak appliance which is a main sponsor for mr kyle morse uh practice starts at 6 30 p.m mountain qualifying at 7 15 and then i think we're doing 200 laps but we'll do it live uh flag to flag coverage on our uh, facebook page um kind of like we did last time so check that out um it's gonna be fun um like i said i'm glad i'm not gonna be sweating my tail off um <laughs> doing 200 laps but it'll be fun and we'll try to try to make it fun for everyone and the viewers and everything like that so um you guys thoughts on that before we get into give me some loving i think it's a great idea that they're doing this you know uh the league i haven't been racing a whole lot recently but uh i think it's pretty cool at least kind of do something different and uh kind of get you into the uh you know, mood of actual racing like you will during the year. So I, right. I think it's pretty cool. I am personally, I don't know if I could last 200 laps on this thing, but uh, <laughs> I, I would love to help broadcast and, uh, you know, showcase some Colorado guys that, uh, you know, do I racing and, you know, local track racing too. So uh, I'd love to still be a part of it, even if I don't race. So yeah, I, I think it's a great idea what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. it will be cool. It's a good opportunity for, um, I mean, to earn some money too. I mean, there's yeah, there's yeah, a person involved. That. These are yeah, they're they're paid. Yeah, there's there's a this a person involved with these ones. So this is mm -hmm. this will be interesting. Um, yeah, I'm I might participate in a couple of them, um, when I can. Uh, 
when I don't have my kids, mainly, uh, the ones where I do, it's kind of hard to jump on the old rig at 6.30 in the uh, evening. They're sitting there, what are you doing? Why are you doing (laughs) video games? And I can't. So... (laughs) Can uh, I get a well, juice box? Get a, yeah. Get, yeah, get them a simulator and have them race. I know. Yeah, I've had I actually, mean, what's the worst that could happen? I've had them actually jump on it a few times and uh, had them take some laps around and whatnot. And then they, I mean, it's just hilarious just to watch it because they're just making right hand turns into the wall. Just as they could think yeah. it's funny. <laughs> yeah. Right. I can see them giggling right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, uh, congratulations to those guys and awesome job for putting those on. Um, yep. It'll be, it'll be a lot of fun and we're happy to bring it to you guys and broadcast it and just like we did with the one that we did. So. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be cool. So hopefully, you guys don't mind our ugly mugs and our uh, voices because you're gonna be hearing us more. So, hopefully, <laughs> we can do it as good of a job as as George and Jake and I did with the last one. So, yeah, super yeah. excited about that. George is gonna be making some sweet graphics, and I won't spoil it for everybody. But excuse me, um, for t- the actual announcement. But yeah, um, if you're bored on a Friday night, um, come watch some great local talent here in your home state of Colorado. Well, most of you, home state of Colorado. Uh, tear it up on iRacing. So with that, um, we will get into some of the fan favorite Give Me Some Lovin' segment. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. I wish people could see <laughs> what we're doing when with the commercial or the uh, ads are playing. Oh, oh God! I know. Do I'm I stupid. sound like I'm a robot? Stupid, at, do I sound like a robot, Mark? You're cutting in and out of just a tiny bit here and there. Yeah, oh. bad. Not you. I think it's your connection. Yeah, but you're good. It's like right it's now. like it's like on Zoom when you know you get a little bit of a delay and you're just like rip 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 every once mm. in a while. So you're good. But oh, we can still hear well, you. You're good. I apologize. I, I mean, anyway. You're yeah. good. All right. Uh, give me some loving. <laughs> um, I did check the Google Form thing, and it is working. So, Carrie, if you're listening, I don't know what's going on. It's user error. <laughs> More I than even, likely. I love yeah, you, Mom. I even, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I even did it tons of ways, and it, and it works. So we don't have any, um, unfortunately on there but um should we lead off we'll like we got two already so yeah um <clears throat> kyle control favorite behind the scenes part of daytona i assume that's for me probably um, for you <laughs> man, I, don't, I didn't see nothing so <laughs> <laughs> um i don't i don't know i don't really know man oh, we did the for the dual races we uh we did the uh uno fan which is the university of northern ohio fan experience deal uh, we also went to the daytona usa museum but um anytime you can get um you know down below in a racetrack um and kind of in the midst of it, it was pretty cool because you never know who you're going to run into like um you know met richard petty that's where we took ryan blaney a photo with him uh i mean there's so many people that we said hi to and everything just walking around and then you see jamie little we took a picture with samantha bush like you you really never know who you're gonna see and everyone in the nascar world is i won't mention names but usually pretty polite um and will sign your autograph take a picture with you whatever um so i'm just gonna say the the people i guess is behind the scenes uh because you just see these personalities on tv but they're they're really down to earth people, and so that was, I guess, my favorite part of it. Uh, what else do we got? Where was that one? Uh, Mike Gigenbacher and Jake, you can take this one. Uh, yes. Uh, Got to read it out. Yeah. So his question is: Are you going to have both GAMs ready for Memorial Day? We're gonna have both cars ready for technically the first race. We're still kind of going back and forth on what we want to do for the first race but uh more than likely we will have i don't know we're still talking about it but majority of uh what we're trying to do is we'll probably bring both cars for memorial day it just uh comes down to a the help and b uh 
just the logistics of getting both cars out there because we're technically going to be there for three straight days because we'll practice friday mm -hmm. and then we have saturday and sunday races so uh mm -hmm. it's just more or less those logistics of getting both cars out there because uh there are some drivers out there that have you know stacker trailers so they can bring two cars in one one hauler we are not as fortunate as those people and nothing no shame to them because that's awesome but you know a little <laughs> low budget team like us um you know it makes it a little little hard but we'll uh we'll be ready for sure so we'll have to bring them out for that memorial day weekend there you go um man we you got gotta a lot do, you gotta do scots real quick Who's your favorite CNS official? <laughs> George, you, George, you take it. Oh gosh, this is like a this is a trick yeah, question a, here. Yeah, yeah this, this is a double-edged sword question here. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Uh, there's too many to uh, name off. You're all my favorite. I'll just go with that. Oh god. Oh god. You just poked <laughs> me with your nose from over here. Jeez. It's a brown. Yeah, it's a little brown. Bit. <laughs> brown. <laughs> oh man you're all you're all good people i like enjoy talking to each one of you yeah, actually sure. in all seriousness i i do enjoy all the track officials i've had good conversations with pretty much everybody so uh mr witherwax um both of you bram camps i mean everybody really so i enjoy everybody there you go um let's see we man said he remember when he texted me before the show started and he said he had a bunch what is it mark <laughs> you can't say you got one and then we'll do uh kyle quintrell did i go to the ferris wheel uh i didn't see one so no i did not um kyle clegg brandon is your legend ready it is pretty much ready yeah i got new uh new five point harness got to put that in um change the rear end oil um basically um put the fenders back on it um, hood and grill on it and then put the wrap on it i'm pretty sure it's just it's ready to go so yeah um oh there's mark there we go okay jake you can so man that one covers to... your face yeah no kidding <laughs> <laughs> there you go there we go so listening to chris eggleston episode jake had talked about uh how to make the ghost cautions go away he mentioned inverting the field i agree however the first episode of season two you all mentioned you were going black flag on the full field invert i want to know what that opinion changed uh because i don't think you should penalize guys for qualifying good yeah i mean it's a good idea so it keeps the competition up you know but there are certain instances where i mean if there's a guy that's a full second off you know, the top five, you know, they just are going to kind of get in the way. And it's like Daytona, you cause a wreck up front. There could be repercussions for the ensuing cars behind. Uh, I still like the idea of inverting the front six or the front half. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I, I just like to see kind of something, not change, but maybe something different to kind of like beef up the racing a little bit, you know, do, do something that's going to make it kind of exciting, kind of fun to watch uh just even more than what we already have so um yeah i, I just want to see the ghost see cautions it. go away yeah that's, that's the main it one. like that's yeah. the main thing yeah I right mean, and i think they're two different deals because your mid race you know in the main event when the ghost cautions excuse me happen and then as we all know cautions breed cautions right so and then and that's and that's it like mr clay did an yeah. awesome job going from i mean numerous times being like fourth <laughs> fifth right around there and getting to the front and then getting out into to a lead like i don't want to see okay he's got a good lead he's got a good setup in the car mm -hmm. like we should all be aspiring to get to that level not try to figure out a way to slow him down yeah right. you know by breeding out a caution like that's bullcrap like he's got a good setup like if he's gone he's gone you yeah. know let the, let the race play out because then like we had yeah. talked about in previous episodes cautions breed cautions and then people's guys getting guys stuff is getting torn up because of an unwanted situation and any next thing you know it's like the own rate i mean i guess i'm calling out jim uh Ooh, he, ain't, he, ain't, he ain't paying for the our race cars you know what i mean mm -hmm. like we yeah. have to go figure out how to fix them at that point you know yeah. and then you're out if it's real bad wreck then you're out two or three race cars for your next race and then what does that do it makes it boring mm -hmm. yeah so that's and, yeah 
Yeah, yeah. I don't think our opinions have changed. It's just we're no. talking about two different things. Yeah, and like George said, I mean, I'm trying to aspire to catch up to Kyle Clegg or Vecherelli or Gasser or whoever may out, be out way out in the lead. Obviously, they're doing something right, and I need to catch them. Not oh, hey, you're going too right. fast. I need you to come back here, and so I can try and <laughs> yeah. What know, the hell? I want reason. my participation trophy. <laughs> Sorry, I, I aspire to try and it's it's like any other sport. The, you know, the Detroit Lions, where we're going to start taking players away from like, you know, the Green Bay Packers and the uh, Rams and all that right. just because they're better of a team. No, you, you yeah. do the things to make yourself better to beat them. And, and that's what yeah, there's there's no mercy rule in football. Yeah, right. You know, they put up 100 points. They put up 100 points. If somebody's got a four second lead on the field and he's lapping people like you know, then. Yeah. Good job. If I, if I get lapped, I need to do better. Yeah. I don't want to exactly. get lapped. So. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you so. Yeah. What else we got? All right. I don't think we – oh, uh, Ray had one last one. Besides all of the male officials, who is your favorite <laughs> official? Well, uh, that's, Ray, that's of course. Given. That's a yeah. given. That's another that's – another, Not to uh, toot your own horn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right up there with us, of course. I'm gonna yeah, say we, yeah, we better say her. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or I'm getting an earful or one of these. Yeah. Or yeah. Uh, <laughs> Chuck Smith Jr. is going to get slapped across the face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's awesome. Right. Well, that was a... Uh, oh, Doesn't it, Scott, it? Oh, my God. That's funny, Kyle. <laughs> it's, um, it must be the hair, Dick. <laughs> He's got some long locks. I haven't he seen does. him in a while, but he had some long, uh, flowy hair there. Like, uh, what's his name from Dodgeball? <laughs> Great comparison. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was a fantastic uh, give me some love. And better than last week, we didn't have too many. So we love to hear from you guys, um, preferably before the show. Yeah, this is just as good, I guess. So um, let's see. What do we got here? So now, yeah, we're getting into rack them up. So this is where we uh, pick our top five for the next race, and we kind of go over our previous race. Um, we pick the top five drivers who we think is going to finish in the Cup Series race, and then we get points per uh, for doing it, basically. So four points for choosing the correct winner, two points for choosing the remaining four drivers, each in the top five, maximum weekly total of 12 points. So, uh, boys, we did not do so good. Uh, yeah. we, we all, we all pretty Goose much got, well, yeah, we zeroed. <laughs> so yeah. I think uh, my closest driver was ninth. That's about it. Everybody right. else was like 15th wrapped out. Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping for Kyle Busch to get in the top <laughs> five there, but yeah, just, I mean, with those, it's so hard with, that's why I br introduced the wheel last year. If everybody remember, I back. spun it and I got Bubba Wallace, right? Just on a whim. So I still can't anyway, you did that. I still can't either. That was awesome. Uh, yeah. so anyways, so, and then for the losers that since we're all losers, we were supposed to chug a beer, but I think we'll just had, carry it over. Yeah, I, I got I my Shaluka many. here. So yeah, you go ahead. Well, I do, got my water. I got technically a double, so I'll do, I'll do the ones for you guys. So there you go. Get there it. Go. Here Thank we you. go. <laughs> Send it. I, I kid you not. Uh, we oh, brought... that's the Everclear one. Woo. <laughs> all right. Let's yeah. get the show on the road. <laughs> Woo. We, uh, <laughs> we, we consumed a case a day the whole time we were in daytona Ooh. so i'm laying off the sauce for a minute uh liver woke up next to you pointing at you yeah exactly cursing, oh. cursing you out yeah. <laughs> but the altitude there it. you can just drink and drink and all of a sudden you're oh. dehydrated and your body's like what are you doing you haven't had water in two months <laughs> please go get a hot dog at least <laughs> yeah well i had plenty of them anyway. oh, God. jordan who uh, you all right, so for uh, California next week, it, it's like, again, it's still going to be kind of hard to tell who's going to get that edge early on in the season. So I'm going to kind of go with previous winners and kind of like what I what I think just off a whim, basically. So uh, I'm going to go top five, starting at five. I'm going to go William Byman coming in fifth. Fourth, I'm going to give it to Kurt Busch. Third, Kyle Busch. Second, Denny Hamlin. And then first, I'm going to go with the proven winner last year was Mr. Kyle Larson. Interesting. Like so it. we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Jake or Brandon, you. Yeah. And in, in doing my picks, um, like you said, it's 
we don't know about this damn car. I mean, the Fords were fast today, don't know, but we don't know <clears> how they're going to be at half. And this is the first true, like I always say, that the real season starts at California, not mm-hmm. Daytona. But um, I'm just going to go on a whim, like you said, with previous winners and kind of, I don't know, where they ended last year. So I'm going to go fifth place, uh, Tyler Reddick. Um, I just think RCR is going to step up their game um, this year. So I'm going to go Tyler Reddick fifth, uh, Blaney fourth, MTJ third. A lot of uh, back-to-back, I guess, Joe Gibbs racing here. MTJ third and Kyle Busch second. And uh, not to copycat you, we we don't know each other's picks. Um, I'm going Young Money, Kyle Larson. Um, they didn't race there last year, so that's also – in the mix because of COVID and stuff. But I think yep. uh, once we get back on the mile and a half, so he was so dominant last year in the Gen 6 car. So go on a whim here, and hopefully I don't have a chug of beer. Jake, what do you got? <laughs> uh, let's see. I should have wrote mine down because I'm kind of like all over the place right here. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> fifth place, I'm going to go with uh, MTJ. Uh, I just think maybe take a little bit of momentum from Daytona and and – make up for the fact that he got wrecked out. Uh, and then I'm going to go Daniel Hemrick. And then I'm going to go Kevin Harvick. Uh, yeah. I'm going to throw Kyle Larson in there. And I don't like doing this, but whatever. I'm going to go Kyle Busch to win it. Yeah, I bad. mean, it, it's going to happen sooner or later. But Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's time he gets one early in the season rather than kind of mid to late season where right. it's like one or two here and there. Yeah. And I think it's rarity. But, yeah, um, to your point, I think the Toyotas because they're the lead, the manufacturer that has the least amount of cars in any given field. I think they feel almost kind of bullied or outnumbered, and I really think just watching that Daytona. I mean, obviously not the same thing, but Ford and, and the Toyotas worked really, really well together, and damn near pulled it off if MTJ wouldn't have got involved in that wreck and Kyle Busch wouldn't have mm-hmm. got. And Denny Hamlin, of course, getting destroyed. But anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah great picks. So I guess we'll we'll see on Sunday. Let's see how it goes. Oh, I guess it's me now. <laughs> yeah. There you All go. right. Well, uh, we are going to get into our second newer uh, segment here, and this one is brought to you by our other partner, Great Frontier Insurance. Uh, this one right there, Great Frontier hey. Insurance, uh, with Mike Dowling. He is a local. Uh, insurance agent here in Littleton, Colorado, but he is able to do insurance all over the state of Colorado. So if you are looking to uh, lower your insurance premiums, he does do bundles with home, auto, and recreational. Uh, And I do know he does look to give you an analysis where he'll uh, take what you have right now. He'll go see what he can do better for you, and he'll compare you know, not only just the price, but your coverages. And that's the biggest thing is that if you don't have the right coverages, really, you're just throwing money away. <coughs> so if you're looking for a great insurance, but also a great guy to be your insurance agent, please go see Big, Big Mike Dowling at GreatFrontierInsurance.com or on Facebook at Great Frontier Insurance. Mike, so Mike, Mike. Mike, Mike, Mike. All <laughs> right. So we're going to get into our, uh, this is our last segment of the day, right? Uh... Yeah. Uh, Minus, major uh, one. Kind of, we got one more preview of next week. Yeah, we, we which Brian one. Sanders is already chomping at the bit. Yeah, yeah wait, exactly. you got to give us like ten Special minutes. And we'll tell yeah, you. come on, man. We got <laughs> you can't spoil it too early. Um, but yeah, we got our little happy hour segment this week. So uh, we're just gonna kind of talk anything, uh, racing related or not, positive rants, something we're looking forward to during the year, and of course, fans, please chime in on on uh, what you kind of want to rant about here. So I'm gonna go to brandon here real quick on uh your happy hour talk yeah um i don't have anything in my notes so i'm just gonna spitball here and hopefully it's good but um obviously just want to thank ethan for the experience at daytona that was a hell of a time bucket list um had a great time glad to be uh back though to reality that was a lot of racing as everyone sitting at home like, well there's no such thing as too much racing but Damn it, when you're at a racetrack for 14 hours for five days straight, I am worn out. That's why we didn't um, – if you tuned in at the beginning of this episode, I apologize for uh, not having the podcast yesterday, but I was in no shape to sit here and BS with you guys. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, really my my happy hour. And thanks to uh, you guys and, and your dad and, and, and Mark for checking in and, uh, you know, trying to see what was going on during the week while we are there. But, yeah, I just have to 
give a shout out to to Ethan for the experience. And um, yeah, that's kind of my happy hour. So what do you got, Jake? Yeah, uh, just getting excited. We're getting closer and closer every day with the uh, with the mods. Uh, got some great news today on our motors. So uh, hopefully we'll have that here within the next couple of weeks. So um, really looking forward to that. Uh, after the talk my dad had with the, the guy that's refreshing our motor, it's uh, like I said, I got to get better. So we got to not only make our equipment better, but I got to be better as well. So really looking forward to the season. Um, just to see all the changes we're making to see if it does better. Um, I know it will be. So now we just got to get this guy to uh, just drive it the way it's going to be built. So super excited about that. Um, other than that, I mean, shoot, I, I, they, you can't have enough. You can't be watching enough racing. If I could watch racing every day, all day long, I, I mean, I, I lay in bed before I go to sleep and I watch literally racing videos. So <laughs> <Yes. Hell> yeah. <laughs> I, whether it's my GoPro from my in-car camera to kind of study what I'm doing and what I could have done better or anything like that. Like I, it's motivating me to, to get back at the track. So, you know, anytime I can watch racing and I'll, I'll watch anything dirt racing, those Hornet cars, those Hornet cars are freaking hilarious. Like that car in your, uh, uh, commercial there i was like shoot we should get that car and throw it in a hornet or like a demolition <laughs> derby or something that'd be fun <laughs> but uh you know uh okay i i personally couldn't get enough racing i was actually talking to my wife last night um uh, i saw this video it was very random but as probably a lot of people know that charlotte motor speedway has i don't i can't remember how many units they have but they have a ton of units that are condos that people can actually buy right and live in on top of turn one grandstands and somebody yeah and somebody did a video of like walking through the whole thing and oh my god it was amazing now if mm -hmm. you're not someone that really enjoys loud cars noises people <laughs> yeah. everywhere probably not for you but i was <laughs> like hmm that is interesting and then the most interesting thing was that the price of it i was oh. just like starstruck in 2018, just guess at, I think it was like the second level. I think there's like four levels. It was a second level condo. Just take a guess on how much it was. Ooh. Five million. Oh, I'm going to say, I'm gonna say gonna go, like, go, No, he's saying higher. Just look at that face. Uh, higher? Oh. No, lower. What? Uh, 1.2. 1, 1. Wow. Lower. 500,000? This guy bought it for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> what? And it was—I'm not kidding. I, I looked it up last night. They're going for about five hundred right now. But in 2018, this guy won, bought one for two hundred fifty thousand. No kidding. It's got its own little stadium seating right up front. The rooms are like literally just gorgeous. Like I'm in. I, I mean, it literally looks right into turn one. It was like, <laughs> um, here, where's my wallet? Take, yes, take my money. Yeah, you work for a bank. Come on. <laughs> I know. I might just go buy one and Airbnb it and pay off there the mortgage go. for just renting it out. I would definitely go there. <laughs> I Yeah, but when I saw that, I was just like, holy shit, $250,000. Now, granted, obviously, it's like $500,000 now, but still $500,000 for that. I mean, well, sure. and as, as Brian Sanders can attest, those next-gen cars are loud. Loud. So I can't imagine living there and hearing that i mean you're, they're not there every day but yeah i don't anyway. if they were there I'd probably day, sleep I'd... better yeah. <laughs> <laughs> instead of nighttime or jungle <laughs> noises jordan has race cars playing yeah <laughs> that's funny. The oh, white that's noise, it's race car noise yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so that's uh i i ran enough so jordan what do you got um so i i'm more or less i'm I'm wanting to know when are they going to put out the dang rules for the season? I've been like checking Facebook every day at Carl National Speedway's wet, like Facebook page, waiting for freaking somebody to give us an update. Brings new meaning to watch. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've been chomping at the bit for that. Just anxiously waiting to see what's going to happen there. Cause I know that they've, said that it's supposed to be any day now but yeah i'm like every it seemed like every couple hours i'm like check it did i miss something but uh outside of that um i guess that just goes to show you how excited i am for the season as well um 
I mean, I know I've, we've kind of touched on this the last couple of weeks during this segment, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we've been making plans, figuring out what we're going to do um, for when we go to Winchester in October, how we're going to Vegas in October. November, uh, no, or no, no, I think it's December. Um, yeah, it's December 7th or something like that. So yeah, a couple of just getting things squared away. I mean, shoot, we're, that's a long time from now, but I mean, it just goes to show you that we're just, we're that jazzed about the whole, the whole season, really getting yeah, this hey. guy in his, getting this guy in his legend car. I'm just ready for practice. Like really, uh, we've come a long way on both cars, uh, especially the backup car and the, or the slash, the one that I'll be driving here and there. <laughs> um, we got the rear end in it. Uh, got everything all hooked up. We got the seat in it. Finally got that all done. Um, now it's just some electrical work that we got to do. Um, couple little, put a transponder in it, a couple little things like that, you know, get Same. the seat belts done and put a body on it and we're ready to go. So, yeah, I mean, it's days like today's where it's like six degrees outside and you're just like, oh, this, I'm so, I'm so over this <laughs> crap. That's why you put heaters I'm in so, the shop. I'm right. so over this crap. I'm ready for some warm weather, shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah. So. Yeah. You just kind of, because seeing all these comments about people talking about, you know, how long till the first practice, I just did notice Friday, the first practice, scheduled practice, at least, hopefully, but, you know, weather permitting, is April Fool's Day. How uh -oh. sick of a prank would it be if all of a sudden, like, the day morning of CNS goes, April Fool's, no practice today. <laughs> Man. I would be so that'd, mad. That'd be messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Did they just announce that? Well, I, I was texting Brian a couple weeks ago. And, oh, okay. Uh, I was like a week or two ago and just asking him some questions and stuff. But he said that, yeah, practice is going to be the first first three or four Fridays before the first first four Fridays because there's five Fridays in April this year. So oh, okay. he said the first four Fridays and then the 29th, which is the Friday before the first race, is the private practice. So you can still go practice, but it's going to be a little bit more than the 25 bucks open practice so got yeah. it so okay well yeah. there we go there There's you go so for whoever doesn't know when the first practice is april 1st apparently is our first practice so there right. we go. Uh, we'll, we'll probably more than likely be there so come out oh, and yeah. see your ugly mugs on a friday i'm ready oh hell yeah hey before okay. we get oh. into the next segment we totally space to talk about the lug nut that was in our title oh we did so they suck. That's what it, happened. Yeah, if I may, <laughs> yeah, it was a bleep show to watch pit stops on Sunday. That was something, and they had two what two a wheel break, and yep. then a tire of Justin Haley's car just the tire come off. Um, and then who was it? Kaz Grala that had a loose one. Um, uh, yeah, I they need to figure that out. That was I terrible. mean, it, it is always going to be, you know hiccups and hiccups, little right. growing growing pains and stuff with a new car new setup i mean you've been using a five lug ever since the induction of the car in the nascar now you're going to this one lug system and it's definitely going to be a little bit of a adjustment period but I, I mean, were but, just weird but this is what goes to, like we had talked about i think at the end of last year they didn't get any of these chassis till after last season you know what i mean right. they didn't really have any leeway time to this should have been this car should have been delayed like another year, to be honest with you, or yeah. even six supply months and introduced chain. it. Yeah. Introduced it like halfway through the season or something and got the supply chain going and let guys actually like, okay, let's put it in our shops and figure out like, what is this thing? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they just rushed it. So that's well, just I, my, I like how NASCAR came out and you know, a couple of the incidents they had, they blame the, tr the crews like, Oh, well they just didn't get the log on good enough because you know, something that they did like, really? You provided all these parts. You yeah. came up with all this crap, and it's their fault? Okay. Yeah. Well, and what I noticed, um, and Ethan was talking about that because he's a big F1 and IndyCar fan, and they use the same thing, but those lug nuts are actually mounted in the wheels, right? So they don't have as many issues. And then if you look at that lug wrench, it's got, we'll call them male teeth on the lug wrench and then female slots that they kind of mesh together. And then when you, you know, hit the air wrench, it turns that deal. And I think I saw it happen on, cause we were for the 500, we were sitting right in front of Chase's pit box 
and God almighty, he had a hellacious day on pit road. But I think one of the times the, the right front tire changer stripped the nut because he couldn't get it off. And that, and he, Ethan made a good point of like, well, what happens when you strip that lug nut? You have to go to the garage and torch it off. I mean, there's so many, I don't know. It just looked really, really bad. And it started off not well uh, yeah. for NASCAR. And I was super worried, but I don't know. Just, Be interesting. Yeah. yeah not a fan of the single lug so far, but we got, got a long season. They got, a, yeah. they got a lot of stuff to take back to R&D and go, what the hell? Right. Well, and the fuel <laughs> thing, too. I don't know if you guys saw that. Chase had yeah. issues with that. Like, they couldn't get fuel in the did. car with the valve. Like, it was just mm-hmm. like, man, we look like amateur hour here. <laughs> yeah. Before we go to the next segment, I've seen a lot of these comments talking about the Friday practice. If I misspoke, I thought when I talked to Brian on the phone that he was <laughs> You're talking heat. about. I know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he said something about Fridays, but maybe I mistook what he said about Friday. Maybe it was all every week except for the Friday before. So I don't know. I'm, I'm missing. I can't see the comments. So to re- oh. pull one up or read one to it, me, I can. Like, Ray was saying here, well, go up a couple more. She said Fridays, since when is practice on Fridays? I thought okay. they I thought Brian had said oh. Fridays. Maybe he meant Saturdays and just misspoke. I don't know. I'm pretty sure when I talked to him like two weeks ago about a couple things. Uh damn it. Especially buying George's number. Um I thought he said Fridays. Maybe he I don't know. Shame. So You're starting rumors. Uh, I know. Shame, shame, <laughs> shame. all kinds of crap out here. You know, you heard it here first. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Get get the darn schedule out. Yeah, exactly. Us, We'd be more know. notified if people. Yeah, technically, you know, we still have a draft in, schedule. We're almost yeah, in March saying. here. It's not technically a finalized yet, but I've been telling everybody it's it official. But yeah, yeah, because the legends haven't change. changed on the last two drafts. So, mm-hmm. anyway, last year I think they had three before the actual final one came out. So I'm I'm just waiting for any day now. Oh, we're gonna make one more change because I. Brian was also saying with everything going on with the uh, truck drivers in Canada right now that the big rigs might, maybe spoiler alert again, um, heard it here first, uh, that we might be in trouble having the big rigs race again this year. So who knows? They're hoping to try and get those guys out. But since they're all from Canada, you know, and with everything going on up there, um, who knows if they'll come down. So um, I don't know. We'll see. But okay, it would be nice for them to be like, to... hey, here's practice, here's the days, yeah. here's Just... the final schedule. Boom. They're well, there's that. And they're so there you up. go. I did see that. So interesting. There you go. All right. Well, there you go, Brandon. Buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, I, I don't take anything offensively. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're going to all be fun. Yeah. Right. All Plus, right. Just, One more. Go you ahead. Know, Chuck is friggin'. Three shots of It's the Shluka oh, talking I'm still now. Feeling it, man. <laughs> All right, one more ad um, for our partner at the Denver Ear, and then Jordan will give you all the news that you've been waiting an hour and 18 minutes for. <laughs> Have you, your friends or family, ever been stuck trying to figure out what to do, where to eat, or maybe even how to go spend your time enjoying the weekend? As we all know, there's so much to do in Colorado. So many places to see, so many events to attend, and so many local small businesses to know about that it sometimes almost feels as though they have become a secret. So the next time you're stuck in this situation, take the guessing out of it and go check out the top lifestyle blog in Denver, one of our presenting sponsors, The Denver Ear. Here you can expect to find local secrets, family-friendly event guides, holiday guides, and special roundups of businesses and locations. Furthermore, they have plenty of options for fun brunches, happy hours, dinners, and more. So the next time you find yourself deciding on what to do, go check out www.thedenverear.com. All right. All right. Go. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. All right. Hey, you're in the sh- wrong profession, dude. You should be uh, making commercials for people. I think you're... Uh, uh girlfriend's dad should take your commercial from earlier and use that as your actual his actual commercial they should do a pretty dang good job yeah thank you i appreciate that but it takes a long time it's an art and that's for sure and i i don't even think i'm good at it. i was just like threw it together yeah here we go anyway. all, right. all right so we're going to have a another guest speaker or guests speakers come on next week so we're gonna Drum have roll. 
So we're going to have Ray Duncan on with her hey. father next week. I just, and... I just asked you, Ray, what your dad's name is. Laramie. Oh, Laramie. Laramie. Yes. Laramie. Yeah. I already oh, got I you, bro. Sorry. So go. Laramie Duncan and Ray Duncan will be our special guests. So please tune in. It should be a lot of fun uh, to pick both their brains, really. We're going to ask them both some hardcore, deep questions. Don't be scared. It'll be okay. <laughs> just have a beer ready to go on your side you'll be fine yeah, exactly yeah. uh but yeah check that out it's gonna be a lot of fun um I, I love doing guest segments it's always a great time we always have to hear some really good stories and some great comments um and then you the listeners you get to know more about the people that you get to see almost every weekend so uh Behind the yeah scenes for sure yeah definitely tune in i know she's got some great stories and she's that lady has been up there for a long time doing what she does so it'll be fun having her on and her father. So we'll have to ask him some old school questions. So anyway, yeah. for all you listeners, if you want to hear some questions that you may have, definitely get on that Send Google form. Uh, it works. Yeah. Make sure you get on and comment before the actual segment. So that way we have some questions to go through. Yeah. During. Very much. <laughs> very true. Yeah, we want to hear will, what you guys have. I will post that when we post the, uh, the link to the extracted audio, not the live video, but I'll post the Google form again. Carrie, if you're listening, I don't know. Maybe you'll have to ask one of your sons what the heck's going on. But <laughs> everyone else like, should be able to click on it and user ask, uh, yeah, Ray or her father or us, whatever you want to ask us. So <laughs> be a good, good but, time. But that's it. And we, yeah, there you we, go. Yeah, we have to share the uh, Chuck Smith Jr. story with her your dad and her altercation last year up in the spot. Oh, yeah. we'll, 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 let her, her we'll let her tell her side of the story. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, there's your mom. User error. <laughs> User error. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. That'll be exciting. So thank you, Ray, uh, yes. for just uh, accepting our invite to come on and should be a good time. So mm -hmm. all of you listeners, like Jake said, get your questions, comments ready to go. You got exactly well less than a week i guess since it's tuesday but six days to get some comments uh questions for ray and her father so that'd be good but yeah with that hour and 22 minutes not good bad. to go yeah. good show boys yeah so enjoy the snow and enjoy this week's episode if you're not oh. listening to it live yeah any one of you people out there that are listening that are working outside i i feel for you yeah. yeah, it is brutal out there. Yeah, I'll think of you guys while I sit in my office at the bank with a nice warm heater. <laughs> that's right. I know up in Cheyenne. That was, was a jerk move. I'm so sorry. That's messed up. It was negative 13 in Cheyenne this morning. Oh, I'll wild. tell you what. The times when we lived in Montana and played college football, those are some brutal winners. I tell you, we actually, one of our last football, actually it was our last football game our junior year. We had to play a Friday night because we played at the high school's field at the time. And we're in this like huge valley, like, I mean, huge valley. So the wind literally comes straight down the valley. And this Friday night, I think it was negative like 10 outside. Yeah. It was brutal. I, I actually wasn't at the time because I was about 275 pounds. I wasn't wearing any friggin' gear or nothing. And it was it was brutal cold. It was kind of dumb that I didn't wear any long sleeves or anything, but when you're going, well, if you remember, if you remember, cause like it was in that bowl. And so the car, it, like you could drive in know. there and then they had like tears going up along the side of the Hills. So everybody in their cars, everybody, there was no fans in the stands. Everybody was in their cars with the headlights on mm -hmm. watching the game from inside their cars. And then, yeah, we ended up, I think we were up 35 nothing at halftime and the coach pulled aside. He's like, Hey guys, you're going to get one more series and you're done. I'm like, oh, no, like when, why would you do that to us? Like you were sweating, you know, and it's negative 10 outside. And then yes, yeah, no, I mean, went in, played one series and then you're done. And then, you know, you got like some of the younger classmen, they all got like those poncho things on, you know, see on the old school football sidelines mm -hmm. and they're standing there all, all, all warm and whatnot. And you come off the field, you're sweating. And it instantly turns to ice. Yeah. So you're freezing at that point. And I just remember turning and looking at some poor defenseless wide receiver. And I'm like, you jacket, give me it now. now. <laughs> That's it on, okay. And he's standing there like shivering. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that was a uh, DICK move, but yeah. throw, up, uh, throw up Kyle Clegg's last comment there. 
Um, so for all of you, I, I know Kyle Clay because we played Little League football together since he lived down here in uh, the Jeffco area. We played football together when we were uh, like, like, what, 12, 13, somewhere in there. And uh, we played in the Carnation Bowl and it <laughs> right. had snowed. It was like a two, three day kind of thing. And it snowed one day and it was frigid cold. And so like between half times in each game, they had like all these bathrooms at this facility they were at. So like there's literally like 30 kids stuffed into a bathroom just trying to get warm. So <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was pretty funny. I'll have to find the picture I have with Kyle Clegg when him and I were both little, excuse my French shits. So <laughs> I, it's, a, it's a cool little picture. I think I sent it to him one time. I'll have to find it. Um, I don't think I think you still are little shits. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> just a little taller. There you go. Well, uh, cool guys. Hope you uh, everyone enjoyed the episode. And if you definitely. didn't watch it live, like I said, it'll get it extracted and put on all of your uh, favorite podcast platforms: Spotify, Apple Podcast, Anchor, all of them. Hopefully, we made it pretty easy to <laughs> still fit. Uh, pretty easy to access us uh, hooligans talking every Monday night. And yes, Kyle Clegg Monday nights um and thus otherwise announced i guess like yesterday when i was in no shape to do a podcast so <laughs> monday 7 30 p.m mountain standard time and yeah so thanks jord thanks jacob and uh thank good, you brandon yeah thanks. of course got a uh good good episode coming next week so looking forward to that but yes sir uh, thanks everybody but, yeah, yeah as thank always, you all. thanks thank you everybody yeah thanks for listening, watching, however you viewed us. And uh, until next time, uh, keep scrubbing those tires. Talk to you guys later. Door, quarter, clear, clear. All you, new leader. Checkers are out. Bring it home. Come on. On behalf of Jacob and Jordan Smith, Smith Family Racing, Brandon Hall Racing, and myself, Brandon Hall, we hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Scrub and Tires Podcast. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram by searching the Scrub and Tires Podcast. Until next time, let's keep scrubbing them tires.